Hi, here's a story I've been following for some weeks now ever since the French news broke that they've detected increased radioactive substances over Europe. This has now been confirmed and the story just got bigger. But first, let's mention the experts say it's nothing dangerous to humans or animals and that it's not a full-blown nuclear disaster nor a nuclear weapon because in that case more radioactive substances would have been detected. In this case only one is detected in much higher dosages than usual and that is ruthenium-106 which is a rare metal similar to platinum and produced from the splitting of uranium-235. Basically it's found in spent nuclear fuel. The reason I find this story interesting is that the high concentrations were discovered first in the 29th of September and still continue. Ruthenium-106 has a half time of about a year so these increased readings will continue. The detection of radioactive substances is done by filtering air and then it takes up to a week to have the filters analyzed. And this is why stories like these are interesting. Apparently the information reaches the masses when it's too late. The Russian Federal Service for Environmental Monitoring, Roshidromet, said that sometimes the atmospheric conditions enhance the transfer of big air masses with pollutants from the southern Urals to the Mediterranean and up to northern Europe. Greenpeace seems to be the only one eager to get the circumstances investigated as a possible radiation accident in the southern Urals. Or at least to investigate if some criminal work took place, for example like materials containing ruthenium-106 that might have been placed in a furnace for remelting metal. As it stands now, more will come out of this story and I just wanted to bring more light to it. So thanks for hearing this out and here's a clip from the France 24 news in English. Take care and all the best. Uh, we detected the uh, ruthenium in Europe starting uh, the, at the end of uh, September. Uh, it was in Italy and then it was observed in many countries across Europe. And the first question was, does it pose a problem for health? And rapidly we uh, made the conclusion that there was no health problem and no uh, environment problems. And to Western Europe? In Western Europe, yeah. correct. And then the second question uh, was, where does it come from? And that's the work that we perform at, uh, in our institute, asking the question, what can we do with the data and with our models? So taking into account meteorological conditions, data that were observed and simulation, we were able to find, to define a large zone where we thought that we could have a release. And it was a large zone located in South, Southern Russia. The Russians deny that it's this uh, uh, fuel uh, reprocessing plant that's to blame. Uh, what did they, have they given you an explanation? We had the explanation with our Russian colleagues about uh, three weeks ago and we showed them our calculation and they said, OK, these are very correct uh, calculations. We agree with this calculation. But on the other hand, we have no explanation. We have no report of any incident or accident in our f nuclear facilities. So what is... What do the readings tell you? What happened, judging by the readings? What is your guess? So, from our investigation, we think that there is a source in southern Russia, but we determine a very large zone, several hundred kilometers long, several hundred kilometers large. And at this stage, we do not know exactly where it happened. Recently, we had uh, new data from meteorological agency in Russia, and what was observed there is they detected ruthenium at a given level, which was not too different from what was observed in Eastern Europe. And these uh, data were obtained not so far from Mayak, a few tens of kilometers from Mayak. That's what we know right now. Jean-Christophe Carriel, it's been more than three decades since Chernobyl, uh, the meltdown of the nuclear reactor there, and, and the safety failures that happened, listed as one of the reasons that brought down the Soviet Union. And 
Would you say that today things have changed drastically or is the former Soviet Union the way it was? I, I think it's very difficult to answer to this question. We have facts uh, and these facts say that we observe ruthenium concentration first in Russia. So something happened somewhere. On the other hand, we have uh, Rosatom, which is uh, in charge of the nuclear facilities in Russia, that say it, nothing happened in our facilities. These are the facts. So at this stage, I can't say more than that. All right.